hello, hello to my Scorpios. Happy Sunday and happy Scorpio season. That's right. Ta-da. We are in Scorpio season. Congratulations to the winner of a free personal reading. I had a fantastic conversation with a Scorpio. She knows exactly who she is. It was a great conversation with you, Scorpio. Um, also, congratulations to the winners. Congratulations and uh, to um, the author of the book that some of you guys won. That was one of the books that she just published. Congratulations to her. She's a Scorpio. And some of you all won her book. So stay tuned for giveaways. We are now talking about breaking generational curses. Let's get it, Scorpios. Let's go. The energy has already been clear, Scorpio. So let's go. Let's see what your cards have to say. Let's see what your cards have to say. They're trying to jump out of the deck. <laughs> let's get into it, Scorpios. Let's get right into it. Again, happy birthday to all of my Scorpios. Hopefully, Scorpio you all enjoy yourselves love up on yourselves get rid of all the energy leaks in your life and develop some energy hacks in your life you know what drains your energy right Scorpios let's get into it let's do it let's do it let's do it like I said the energy has already been cleared Scorpios we are now in Scorpio season we are also we are also coming up on a new moon in Scorpio on the 25th of of this month which is the exact same day as the solar eclipse solar eclipse makes everybody tired lethargic almost we're going through some deep transformations and so who what better sign to show everybody how to go through a transformation than a scorpio that's you guys right so here we have the six of swords we also have the queen of cups we also have the ace of swords we also have the ten of swords we also have the Three of Cups and also the King of Cups. All right, let's get it, Scorpio. Make sure you all saw the cards, these cards right here. King of Cups and the, um, the Three of Cups. All right. Somebody is already in a posture of gratitude to source. Let's get some questions out of the way first so we can really get into your reading. Okay, Scorpios, let's go. First question you want to ask yourselves during Scorpio season, on this new moon, in preparation for this new moon in Scorpio, which is exact same is on the exact same day as the solar eclipse we only have solar eclipse only a few times a year and it always falls on a new moon right so it just happens to be new moon in scorpio yay all right so scorpio you know that you all are a sign that digs very deep this moon in scorpio is not going to stop until everything that's wounded and unhealthy in your spirit or in your universe is brought to the surface so the process of purging is mostly not much fun while it's going on, but you're going to be so glad. I mean, so, so, so glad that you're breaking some generational curses. And the reason why we have talking about generational curses is because it's uh, Pluto is a generational sign. You all are ruled by Mars and Pluto. And so it's a generational, um, excuse me, generational planet, excuse me. Um, Pluto is a generational planet. So here's some questions for you. That I want you all to write down whoever wants to pin it to the top. Uh, I mean, whoever wants to type out the questions, I'll pin it to the top so that everybody else will have the questions. First question you want to ask yourself. So you want to explore these areas of your life is what are the stories of your ancestors, your past lives? The second question is where do you need to go to heal your connection with your roots? The third question is that was the second question. The third question is do you feel truly empowered in your relationships and career? We know everything under the relationship umbrella, Scorpio, is like your work relationship, which is a professional, your platonic, your family relationships, your romantic relationships. Do you feel empowered in those relationships? Do those people nurture your spirit? Of course, either people are going to either people are do or they don't. There's no like gray area in between. Either they nurture and we're not talking about narcissism. Either people, you know, people you know, their soul connects with yours or they don't. I mean, you know, no harm, no foul if it doesn't. The fourth question is, is there a deep trauma you need to look at, heal and release during this moon? And then last but not least is who are the people, meaning the therapists, the healers and so on, who could help you to dive deeper? Let's get it. All right. So here we go. Six of swords. I see somebody sailing away from something that just really just does not nurture your spirit. That's why I've been leading up to this. Leading up, we, we got we got like one more day left in this last quarter moon phase in Cancer, right? We're still feeling the effects of the last quarter moon in Cancer, even though the last quarter moon kicked off on the 17th. We're still feeling the effects of that. Also, we're just kind of like overlapping with this new moon in Scorpio. Cancer and Scorpios are water signs, right? So now that you know 
you now that you know what feeds or what nurtures your spirit and you know exactly what self-care is scorpio now it's time to take it a step deeper right okay certain things i'm going all the way back to my ancestors because you are your ancestors coming back around you all know that right so now i'm going back to my ancestors and i'm saying okay now i understand what the generational curses were right with the generational uh cycles were and so we know that a generational curse is not always drugs alcohol uh people being lazy not getting a job whatever sometimes it is living the exact same lives as your parents did sometimes it looks like working too hard sometimes it looks like not considering other people's feelings sometimes it looks like not teaching your children life skills right but what a curse is is the cumulative effect on a person um of of things that their ancestors did, things that their ancestors believed, or things that their ancestors practiced in the past. And it has a consequence of an ancestor's actions, beliefs, or sins passed down. So you've heard uh, heard people say sins of the father. It's kind of like that, or sins of the mother, or whatever. But it's kind of like that. But I'm seeing somebody, like, I'll give you real time. Let's say, for instance, you, um, you grew up in a household where uh, you may have had one parent that enabled the other's poor behavior and then you grew up to be you said in your mind you're like i'm never gonna grow up to be like that I'm, i would never put up with that kind of stuff and then boom here you are 20 30 years later putting up with the same exact stuff that maybe mom or dad put up with or maybe grandma or granddad put up with and, and they use their logic to say well you know when you make a commitment to somebody it's forever and somebody is miserable right Somebody could be breaking that chain. So I do see you sailing away from some stuff, not looking back with any regret whatsoever. And guess who's helping you out of it? Your ancestor. That's right. Ancestors are all around you. I see now moving forward, Scorpios, you all are going to be asking people's motives. What are people's true motives for wanting to be in your life so that you don't end up like this? People constantly projecting their neg negativity in their commitment to misunderstanding you. You're like, no, you committed to misunderstanding me? Deuces, I'm out. <laughs> I already know I'm a good person, right? And again, that's not even narcissism. It's like, okay, and unless your delivery is one of one that's helpful, like, you know, sometimes people tell you things and the delivery is in, a, in such a way where it really invokes thought, where you say, okay, you know, maybe that's an area I can work on. Then you got some people that's just coming out in their mind, they're keeping it real, but that's their reality. It's not yours. It's like, okay, you could have delivered that different. You wanted me to listen? That delivery was just downright poor. It was a mess. So I do see you being compassionate towards things that you're leaving behind. You're wiser now. This is the king and queen of cups. And I'm also seeing you celebrating something. So I do see somebody celebrating um, some new creativity coming across your life, your path. It could mean a creativity, new creativity could mean a romantic relationship. If that's what you want, not everybody wants to be in a romantic relationship, Scorpio. It could be, um, um, you meeting a new person that just right, like, it's like they strike, struck a match in your spirit and just said, okay, now I got some new creative ideas. I can write new songs. I can produce. I, I feel like I'm inspired to write you know, a book now. I feel like I'm inspired. This person is this, this, this like this, um, wise, but youthful energy that's like strikes the, the little kid in you again, to tap back into that creativity. That's what I'm seeing for you all after sort of being in a zombified state, maybe that last relationship that you were in kind of sort of almost felt like it took you out. And when I mean, took you out, I don't mean like, you know, the K word, I mean, took you out as if, you know what? I don't even want to get out of the bed anymore. I lost all of my, I lost all of my, um, inspiration. I don't feel creative at all anymore. Those kind of things, right? Remember, um, you all are ruled by two planets. You're ruled by Mars, but you're also ruled by Pluto. Mars is that planet of your assertion and action. That's masculine energy, right? That's, that's your energy. As a matter of fact, without the planet Mars, we'd be all walking around or maybe it'd be just like not wanting to get out of bed at all. Just like, you know what? Forget it. Right? Mars is the energy planet. It spurs us to action and it allows us to further our ambitions. Okay. So kudos to Mars. Let's give it up for Mars, right? Mars is that planet that makes you compete with yourself versus looking at somebody else's competition. Hey, let me be better than I was before. That's the high frequency, right? The low frequency would be, let me compete with that person and try to take that person out because I don't want them to have just as much as I have. No, I'm competing with myself. Me versus me, right? 
Mars is also the planet of survival. It's the planet of courage, being daring, also fuels that anger inside of you. Let me get up and, you know, if, if I don't like what I'm looking at in the mirror, let me get up and, and change it, right? Also, your sexual drive, your fighting spirit, your vitality. So let's keep it moving forward. Let's keep it moving forward. Let's keep it moving forward. We're talking about breaking generational change, generational cycles, Scorpio. Let's get it. Here we have the King of Swords, the Five of Swords, the Eight of Pentacles, the Eight of Swords, the Queen of Swords, and then we also have the Four of Swords. Let's keep it moving forward. Yeah, somebody's giving away an enormous amount of their power, but you're getting all of that back. You're getting it back. You're getting it back. You're getting it back. Look at all of this air. Somebody's giving a lot of air, a lot of attention, a lot of energy to something, right? But here you're getting back on your throne. You and your person, is they're, they're empowering you. That person could be an air sign. That that person could be like breathing air back into you. Could be Aquarius, Gemini, or Libra. But again, this is why this is why you don't you don't get to a point. You're like, okay, I don't like this sign. I don't like that sign. I don't like that sign. You have to know what your moon sign is because some astrologers say it's more important than your sun sign. What nurtures your spirit may not nurture another Scorpio spirit or another Scorpio spirit. You see what I'm saying? So I do see it's like King and Queen of Swords. But both of you all are very wise. Both of you all know your worth and know your value. You're not entertaining a whole bunch of craziness. You know, you're just direct, but it's in love, right? And so sometimes people don't understand being direct in love. No matter how kind you are, know how nice you word it, somebody's going to get offended. What you supposed to do with that, right? Seriously, it's like... But here's the thing with you guys is that emotionally you all are the smartest sign in the Zodiac. So... You all will already know emotionally how a person is going to be able to receive your delivery, right? So there would be no excuse if you say, well, I didn't know that that person was extra sensitive in that area because you all are emotionally the smartest sign in the Zodiac, right? So I do see, I do see somebody going from feeling smothered in a relationship or maybe some past relationships or family relationships, not necessarily feeling free, not really seeing themselves settling down, getting married or seeing themselves you know, being a billionaire, a multimillionaire or whatever. Like I see somebody who felt restricted and I see that freedom coming out. You're going to meet somebody. Some of you all are going to meet somebody. It could be a love interest or it could be a, like it could be a agape, agape love interest where it's just a platonic friend or it could develop into something deeper. The beauty, the beauty of this, um, this, this new moon in Scorpio that we have coming up on the 25th, as well as the solar eclipse, is that it's going to give everybody an opportunity to rest. So if you've been feeling like, you know what, you want to sleep in an extra 10 minutes or you want to go to bed a little t you know, earlier or whatever, solar eclipse right? Or if you feel like, okay, well, I, I feel like I really need to reset my spirit so I can get all of that other stuff. I can start breaking some generational chains of over giving people, giving people chance after chance after chance, hoping that things are going to change. And then boom, nothing changes, right? So somebody coming into your life is going to tell you your power of tapping into that divine masculine side of yourself. Hey, how many chances are you going to give certain people? Maybe the first time is time to cut them off. Maybe it's the second time. Maybe it's the third, depending on what your rules are in your universe, right? But somebody put the swords down. You don't have to come across as defensive or cutting new people off in your life because, because of some fight, some fight you've dealt with in the past. You can release all of that. Your swords are within. They don't have to be outside of yourself. That makes you look very powerless instead of powerful. So I do see somebody learning how to tap into that masculine side of yourself. And just like I said, cutting things short. Right? And so now it's going to make more room for your at least eight streams of income. Yeah, when I say somebody's giving away a lot of power, somebody's let somebody talk too uh, negatively about them for too long. Somebody's like, no, uh, uh, I may, you may not even have to respond all the time. Your actions are going to speak louder than your words. That's what I'm saying. Like somebody's generational curse was maybe watching family members just stay hanging there and let people just run all over them. Like, you know, like an 18 wheeler, like who's doing that? <laughs> you don't appreciate me. You don't nurture my spirit. Guess what I'm doing? I'm taking my sword. I'm cutting off the air supply, meaning that I am severing ties with the relate because nothing can nothing can live without air. So I'm severing ties with this job. I'm se I'm cutting off the air supply of this job, meaning I'm going to go look for something else. It doesn't it doesn't serve my it doesn't serve 
my the frequency that I'm on. We're not we're not on the same frequency. I have to keep dealing with the same stuff and not being appreciated. So before they they cut the air supply from you, meaning that before you get fired, if it doesn't work for me, I'm leaving. I was smart enough to intelligent enough to get this job. I'm I can intelligent enough to get the next one. I'm like that's a no-brainer, right? And and so same thing with your romantic relationships, friendships and even family relationships. You've evolved into a different person, a, a higher frequency person. And so you're taking your air back, ascending higher. You're cutting the cord and you're ascending higher and higher and higher, Scorpio. So again, happy birthday to my Scorpios. All right, let's keep moving forward, Scorpios. Let's, let's do it. All right, here we have, see, Ace of Pentacles, Knight of Pentacles. We have the Five of Pentacles. We have the Two of Pentacles. The Page of Wands and also the Ten of Cups. I absolutely see somebody in a loving, thriving relationship. Loving and thriving relationship. But the first thing you want to do is ask Source, what are their motives? What's the motive, right? The motive is not always this. It's not always money. Not, not everybody is sticking to you because of money. Some people are not even really motivated by money. I can tell you one sign in particular that's not motivated by money is Aquarius. They're not motivated by money at all because the energy of money, they can get it easily, right? Very easily they can get their their well you all are emotionally the most intelligent sign in the zodiac. Aquarius is intellectually the smartest sign in the zodiac. So they're smart enough to get what they want. The energy of money is also in your connections and how you treat other human beings, right? That's also worth more than money that your government puts value on that that bill, that that note, whatever the currency is in your country, because I know I have people all over the world watching tuned in, but whatever your government says that that value of that piece of paper or that coin is, it can't even compare to relationships with other human beings, right? So you got to know what you're working with. Some people may not have as much money as you have because there's a lot of money in your cards, but they bring value of being able to just encourage you. Whatever nurtures your spirit. That's why I say go look up your moon sign. Ask God, what, what are their intentions? What are their true intentions? Does their spirit nurture my universe? If it does, go for it. If it doesn't, sever ties with me and move on. Sounds easier said than done, right? But the sooner you start severing ties with things that just doesn't serve your purpose in your universe, the better off you're going to feel. I see somebody working very hard learning how to kind of detach from the overthinking of what you had to leave behind or overthinking of people who have hurt you in the past. You don't even need to overthink it. Cut them off. Move on. Balancing out your daily affairs when it comes to your money. That's what I'm seeing for somebody. Somebody's balancing out their daily affairs when it comes to money. And I see you feeling a lot happier. Here we have Page of Wands. I'm telling you, somebody has a new inspiration in their life. It could be a new love interest, but it also could just, like I said, like new love interest, because not everybody's interested in a romantic relationship. A new love interest could also mean a new agape love interest, where that person is really, really helping to light a flame up under you, which means inspiring you. Um, and you feel more youthful being in their spirit, around in their presence, right? So that's also, and it could be, like I said, it could develop into this. You guys sitting on a rainbow together. Showing each other your 32 teeth. Smiling really hard. Feeling great. Filled with glee. Right? You feel, both of you all feel like your inner child is protected. Your inner child is nurtured. That's what some of you all feel like in your friendships and in your romantic relationships. Yeah, you feel nurtured. You feel free. You feel happy. Let's see what else we got going on here. Let's see what else we have going on here. Again, happy birthday to all of my Scorpios. Happy birthday to all of my Scorpios. Stay tuned. Make sure you all stay tuned for the giveaways. Sometimes they will be on my Instagram page. Sometimes they will be on my community page. And sometimes I will announce them in, you know, in the readings. All right. Yes. Very nice. Okay. Mm-hmm. This devil card came in. See these chains right here? These are chains of fear, chains of doubt, chains, chains of, for some people, addiction. Um, maybe somebody is addicted to something that happened to their past. Like they're addicted to this idea. Maybe somebody called you the devil. Maybe somebody called you the devil and somebody may be just like afraid 
to to be their authentic self because of what you're you're thinking about what other people think fear doubt all of that here's another sword you're too wise for that king of swords again twice this is what source is trying to reiterate is that you're way too wise to care about what other people think if you know what your intentions are scorpios like i said where's the other card right here ten of cups came out twice don't worry about what other people think, right? Somebody could have flat out called you straight up the devil or the devil incarnate or, or, or the devil incarnate or Satan or whatever they may have called you. Bottom line is this is what I'm seeing for you all. If this is what you want, don't be afraid to write it down during the new moon, uh, the, the new moon so that that's a part of what you're trying to manifest, right? Because I can tell you this one thing, right? You're inspiring people. Was there an Aries in your life that called you a demon? Looks like you're inspiring people. And inspiration, like I said before, inspiration doesn't always feel good, right? You may inspire somebody. Maybe somebody was just sitting around the house, zoned out somewhere, and your success may have inspired them. They may not ever tell you that. Um, or, you know, maybe it was something about you that lit a flame in them. They may not ever tell you, but just know your job and their life is, oh, is done, right? Here we have the King of Cups. Again... We got double cards out here, right? We got the King of Cups came out twice, the Ten of Cups came out twice, and the King of Swords came out twice. Very, very inspirational. Like I said, you all are inspiring people, and, and you're in a very powerful, very wise position, and you all don't even realize don't even realize it. Don't even realize it, right? So, and then also we have the, like I said, Ten of Cups. So here's the thing when I look at your cards. The Emperor card is attached to... Uh, is attached to Aries. Somebody may have a very unhealthy relationship with somebody who has Aries in their chart. It could be your sister. It could be your brother. It could be a romantic situation. Whatever, whoever it is, that person has Aries somewhere in their chart. And your fear and doubt of like the unknown, because you all are a very loyal sign. You're loyal to whatever you're loyal to. That's all, that's all Earth's. I mean, excuse me, that's all fixed signs. That's you, Aquarius, that's, that's uh, Leo and Taurus. All very loyal signs to whatever it is you're loyal to, right? There could be some fear or doubt that, okay, because you and Aries actually share the planet Mars, right? This is the connection between Scorpio and, and Aries is that both of you share that passionate planet, that energy planet, that planet that gives us that fuel for us to be more assertive and to take action, right? That planet that um, gives us the courage and the sexual drive and the fighting spirit and the, and the energy and the vitality and as well as the conflict. So just as passionate as you all are, they could also be like this you know, locking of horns kind of sort of thing, that kind of energy, like a love hate situation going on. You have to decide, do you want to keep giving up your power to something like, and that's where the ego would come in. You want to continue giving up your power to something that really just doesn't serve your highest purpose, or do you want to move on from it and just go ahead and sever ties with it and just move on from it, right? They are a or they may be the ones to walk away first because Aries is a cardinal sign. Cardinal signs mark the beginning of a, the change of a season. So if they decide, hey, I need to move on from this and I need to change season, and you're a fixed sign, if you're still fixated on it, you got to decide, okay, if they leave your life, I, I need to go ahead and just start saying, God, thank you for that time. Let me just, let me move on with this. Let me just move on with my life. Maybe, maybe they needed to leave first. Maybe they needed to take the action first because they're divine masculine side. But whatever it is, I see somebody moving on. I see somebody finally deciding to just move on, you know, in their lives and just move forward. That's, that's where you're breaking the generational curse or the generational cycle. And again, you got to look at your own ancestors and say, why did I stay in this situation so long? When I go back and look at those five questions and look at the, the stories of your ancestors, your past lives, because we are our ancestors. Did you just have that? I'm, I'm not going to stay in it no matter if it's 
no matter if it's cutting me like a sword, I'm going to just stay in it anyway and just keep, you know, the intensity of it. You know, no, uh-uh. Somebody's taking their power back. Somebody is dealing with themselves inner. They're dealing with their own secrets. They're purging. Somebody is, you know, um, going through a metamorphosis. A new romantic cycle begins for somebody. New romantic cycle begins. Yeah, somebody's not going to be fighting for something again. Somebody is going to just like, I'm, I'm moving on from something. I, I need a healthy distraction. That's what I'm saying. A romantic cycle is beginning. You're, you're a very wise person. You're very compassionate. You're no nonsense. Like here, we're talking about the sword energy. You you are uh, very passionate about whatever it is you're passionate about. And maybe that's just going to give you just an extra nudge that you need to move on from something else in your universe. Like you could be, you know, frustrated with a family member over here that you've been wanting to cut off. And a new love in your, prof in your romantic life comes across your path. And that energy is just so, like I said... It just feeds your spirit and you just say, you know what? I need to go ahead and cut this person off for life. This is, it, it makes me, it's messing up my new relationship. Every time I leave this person's presence or I think about that person, I get so heated and upset. I don't even realize I'm taking it out on my new person. I need to go ahead and part ways with it. Yep. Family. It could be somebody in your family that you just want to part ways with. It could be somebody in your family that you just finally decide I don't need to part ways with this. It's messing up my it's messing up my romantic, you know, it's messing up my romantic life. Again, only take what resonates with you. We're talking about breaking generational curses. So, like I said, those five questions that I gave you at the beginning of the reading should help you with um answering questions about you what's in your universe from your ancestors right and so what you want to part ways with moving forward so that you can make the you know have a better better life in your universe let's see what else we have here scorpios let's see zero zero i am observant that's right zero is a very powerful number zeros two zeros angels ask for your attention open your eyes listen and think about everything that is happening trust your intuition and follow their guides without any delay focus inward through meditation and prayer that's right Focus inward through meditation and prayer. So whether they leave your life or you leave their life, praise God for all of it and keep it, keep it moving forward. Keep it moving forward. But you don't have to be locked in because that's, that's, the, that's the devil energy. See how this person has chains around them? Like somebody's in bondage. It's like somebody is in bondage. So you could be in bondage to maybe, your, um, maybe somebody's parents said, hey, you know, you all... Um, have to stay connected to each other for life. This is the only sister or brother you have, or this is the only cousin you have, or the only whatever. And family is not the family is supposed to do X, Y, and Z. Yeah, that may have been the rules that they learned from their their parents, and then their parents, and then their parents. But somebody is incur. Your ancestors are like those are the rules that that we created here on Earth. But now that they're in another realm, they're saying you can go ahead and break that. They're giving you the permission. Go ahead and break that. You are over there feeling tortured. Break it. Here we have affirmations for love. That's right. And we're talking about agape love. I am connected to all love and all light. I welcome all forms of authentic love into my life. I deserve to love and be loved. I love myself as I am. All is love and I am loved. I approve of myself. I am enough. My heart is full of love. I share love of with those around me. That's it, Scorpio. That's what I'm talking about. Like, listen, we're talking about breaking generational curses, breaking generational chains that doesn't always look like drugs, alcohol, the, the three-letter S word, doesn't always look like depression. Sometimes it just looks like, okay, something that somebody, some rules somebody created that's causing everybody moving forward to be miserable, right? So it's time to break those and, and move on and, and get your life, like really get your life. Here we had a 10 of cups. This is about somebody like, the, you know, having inner peace. Whether you decide to be single or you want to be in a romantic relationship, you have inner peace within. So if you decide you want to bring somebody else or uh, merge with their universe, they have to have inner peace with themselves too. Beautiful union. That's what I have for you, and I will see you all on Monday. Bye.